This is Jim Sawyer for CapitalismandCrisis.org, home of Zombinomics. Here comes automation again. Its challenges have dogged the economic system throughout the post-World War II era. But in each decade, the U.S. managed to adapt, to reinvent itself economically, even by absorbing some of automation's darkest impacts. That is, until now. Actually, the automation story began over two centuries ago in Great Britain, shortly after the inking of our own U.S. Constitution. Later, three generations later, following America's Civil War, the first Industrial Revolution finally arrived on American shores. One thinks of coal-burning technologies, of steam power, driving locomotives, and factories. Automation associated with the first revolution pulled workers away from rural areas, pulled them out of agriculture, and then moved them toward mechanized jobs in growing cities. Then, two generations later, a second industrial revolution followed, powered not by steam, but by the internal combustion engine. With it, the nature of work shifted again to assembly line production. Fordism, as Europeans call it, is named after Henry Ford for his creation of the mass production system that turned out Model T's. How, then, is the American economy finishing a century-long leap from the Model T until now to the presidency of Donald Trump? Well, the run-up to now, the third phase of the Industrial Revolution, began comparatively recently with invention of the microprocessor by an engineering team at chipmaker Intel in 1971. All are familiar with the outcomes, desktop computing, smartphones, the internet, sophisticated information searching strategies, and a host of apps including Facebook and Twitter. Actually, a fourth phase of the Industrial Revolution is beginning just now. Otto, a maker of self-driving trucks in partnership with Uber, recently transported a semi-load of Budweiser beer from Fort Collins, 120 miles, to Colorado Springs, driverless, just 17 days ahead of the presidential election installing Donald Trump into the White House. Indeed, in a path-breaking New York Times survey, journalism professor Thomas Edsel describes how driverless trucks and other aspects of artificial intelligence, or AI, is lurching forward in this fourth work revolution phase not at a linear pace, but rather one that is exponential. On the bright side, the fourth phase promises a quickening of living standards, at least for those able to participate directly. However, according to Stanford University's Mordecai Kurtz, inequality is about to take another giant leap backward, even to the point, he foresees, of threatening the very foundation of American democracy. The great this location immediately ahead, Kurtz predicts, will impact workers at a fevered pace compared with present labor force dislocations as accelerating automation substitutes complex machines and complex systems for people. The switch over to driverless trucks is but one poignant example of what lies just over the horizon, of what soon will be diffused broadly throughout the entire American economy. In heavy trucking, for instance, MIT labor economist Frank Levy estimates there will be 76,000 fewer commercial driving jobs just six years out. Ultimately, explains Daryl West of Brookings, full adoption will displace alone as many as 2.5 million truckers. What will happen to displaced truckers and to myriads of other mid-level workers? According to Edsel, as they fall out of the blue-collar, mid-skilled labor force, most will land ultimately in non-prestigious lower-wage work in careers such as food service, building maintenance, and elder care. Labor economists and policy experts offer constructive proposals to reduce negative impacts. Among them, increasing the rate of the progressive income tax to pay for retraining of displaced workers, strengthening collective bargaining systems, raising the minimum wage, and on and on. 
For the most part, however, American workers in the spirit of Donald Trump are having none of it. Little thought seems to be taken towards stewardship, towards securing the economic future for the coming generation of those who will come after, after this generation of American workers. More later on the future of the American worker and the future of work in America. This is Jim Sawyer for CapitalismInCrisis.org. Stay tuned.